love. That's the first one. You know, it's got you got you got to love what you're doing, man. You got to love these kids, regardless of what their background is. You know what I mean? I a lot of these people out here come. They like, man, he did this. Oh, he did that. Oh, he did this. You oh, you don't man. He did no, no, no. I don't even care. <laughs> you're locked up, and you're locked up for a reason. Like whatever mm. it is, you know, it, it doesn't matter with me. But you, but you got to love kids. You got to love your job. You got to love what you're doing. Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. Today, we are joined by the head boys basketball coach at Gainesville State School, Henry Thomas. Coach Thomas is in his 41st year of coaching, 37 as head coach. He's had coaching stops at Mirando City, Crystal City, Calvert, Denton, Louisville, Flower Mound, and now Gainesville State School. Coach Thomas has an overall record of 575 wins and 303 losses. He led Calvert to playoffs every year from 1987 to 2001 with three regional finals, two regional championships, and two state championship appearances. At Louisville High School, he led the Farmers to playoffs from 2005 to 2011 with four regional qualifiers. Coach Thomas has received the John Wooden Award, Brazos Valley Coach of the Year, Super Centex Coach of the Year, and was named District Coach of the Year 10 times. Before we hear from Coach, take a moment to subscribe to our podcast and follow us on social media at Jamoni Podcast. I got you. There he is. How you doing, buddy? Man, I'm good, Coach. How are you? Coach, doing good, man. Doing good. Yeah, what's new in your life right now? I've got a class this period, but I'm hoping that I'll get a substitute to cover my class in the gym. So oh. um, let's, let's knock on wood hope that happens. So you have like eight kids running around. Coach, in there. <laughs> Coach I hope that uh, you coming on and talking hoops with me doesn't get you in trouble. I feel oh, horrible. <laughs> I feel horrible about that. This time of year, tell me kind of what's what's new with you. Man, there, everything's going pretty good. It's kind of it's really slow because this is like our first year since COVID hit. That we don't have a uh, football team, and mm. we, uh, we had some kids that uh, didn't qualify. We only had like four that was eligible to play. So with even a six man, you still got to have six, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, we, <laughs> so we're we're hurting right now. So we got, got I'm got to find myself with a lot of free time. Now, how long have you been at Gainesville State? This will be year number ten, right here. Year number ten. Number ten. Wow. Sure. I know, man. I know. Well, I really appreciate, you know, you one, this is uh this is an honor for me because I've been a fan of yours from afar. We haven't had a ton of interaction over the years, but I don't know if there's a coach in Dallas, Fort Worth, or probably in Texas that doesn't know you or have watched you or you've impacted them in some way. So this is really special for me. And I also appreciate, you know, the work that you've been doing at that school and the mission that you see there. And so just thank you so much for your time. Oh, Coach, I'm, I'm glad to be here, man. I appreciate the – it's an honor, you know, you say when you say Matt Samen, I'm like, yes, let's do this, man. So, you know, <laughs> I get fired up as well. So, you, you know, just just watching you and the things that you've been doing over the, you know, few years that you're doing this stuff, man, it, 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 means, it means a lot, you know. I, we appreciate what you do as well. Well, thanks for that, Coach. Coaches. The Jamoti Podcast is powered by Bology. Manage and measure your players' skill development and increase accountability year-round utilizing the Bology app. Boost inter-squad competition with drills backed by the National High School Basketball Coaches Association, including a 40-shot Bology skills assessment. Please visit Bology.com teams for information on how you can provide this resource for your team. Coach over 600 wins and almost 40 years uh in education which is just incredible uh me being at year 17 it just <laughs> seems like man how is that possible how is it possible to get there but with the career that you have have had I, I imagine that you have some daily habits that really set you up for success that have allowed you to have this career that you've had so what are some of those habits yeah you know like i say man i first thing i do you know i guess being a a pastor, you know, I've been pastoring as long as I've been coaching, you know. I, uh, so the first thing you do is just, you know, you get on your knees and pray, you know, just, you know, you thank God for, for your family. I've got, I've got five kids. Wow. 17 grandkids, 
two great grandkids, you wow. know, so three great grandkids. <laughs> so, you know, you, you thank God for your family, you know, that that you that God has allowed me to be here to, to see them. Uh um my kids, I got three kids that's coaching. So uh, I, I get a chance to, you know, just thank God for more than anything, more than asking for stuff. You know, I'm, people are always in need. I'm in need, you know, but I, I just always find myself just thanking God when I get up in the morning, you know, and, and just, you know, opening the word of God and just praying and just talking to him in the morning, you know. So that's kind of how I get going now. I would imagine starting your day off with an attitude of gratitude like that just sets you on the right path for the day. That's it, man. That's that's it. That's it. You know, so with anything else that gets in your way, you know, uh, even at, at this place, you know, I, it was easier when you was in public school, you know, because yeah. you got good kids, you know, you got a few you know, your classes and things, but most of the kids uh, are pretty top of the line kids. But now, you know, you got the not so good ones, you know, <laughs> but yeah. you got to deal with them every day. So you really need that extra prayer. And I do, I can't wait to get into the, the, Cult, the school that you're at and get deeper into that and how you've been able to help those kids out in, the, in that situation. And I do want to talk about that. But one thing that you said about being a pastor, as long as, you, as you've been coaching, I don't think I've ever been able to ask this question. What would you see or say are some similarities between coaching a team and pastoring a church? Oh, my goodness. It's, it's like hand in hand. You know, my 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 motto at school is that we can accomplish great things together as long as no one cares who get the credit you know and I, and I and I've added that on to my um uh, our church you know I've added it on to our, our association that we're that I'm over and and I just keep that attitude that you know when you work together things good things happen you yeah. know whether you're at school or whether you're in the church how have you been able to separate not or maybe not separate but do both of those things really well over the years? Because I would imagine coaching, uh, that's full-time, but I would imagine the pastoring part is too. Yes. I, first of all, I've been I've been blessed to have principals that's, that understood that, hey, man, he, he's a pastor. You know, uh, I know I know you know uh, the guy that used to be over the uh, Great American Shootout, uh, Mike Kunstadt. Yep. Man. You know, <laughs> I tell, hey, man, I can work Friday and Saturday, but I can't do anything on Sunday. He said, coach, don't worry about it. Well, when, when it's time to pay us on that, on that Sunday or that Saturday, man, my check was just like the guy that worked Sunday. You know, he didn't, he didn't make a difference, you know, and, and that, and, and, and that was, that's kind of where it's been with school. You know, I, hey, I, I passed the church. I'm, I'm not going to be doing a lot of things. I'm not going to do anything on Wednesday nights. You know, kids, they they'll be gone. You know, but I'll be at church at seven o'clock, so we'll be out of here. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm good. You know, but you know, and tournaments are Saturday, and then you got to get ready for a sermon on Sunday. You know, but I've, I've been able to, to get not not so much as uh, cut back on the basketball or cut back on the church, but I've been able to work it all together. You know, hmm. for those last. The last 40 years, man. So I've been able to do that. When I was at McKinney High School, I worked for Coach Watson for five years, the great Wes Watson. Boy, and you can't do the guy. <laughs> no, it's so true. And, and I don't know if there's a guy out there that doesn't react the way you did to him, doesn't like him. And he's just one of those guys. But <laughs> near near the end of my time there, my faith became uh, a really huge part of my life. And I've started to feel the friction a little bit between what I believed and what I really wanted to communicate to my players. I can't imagine over your 40 years that the, the, the way you've felt that, or how did you deal with that friction? People knowing that you're a pastor, what you believe, but in the public school world, sometimes having to navigate that delicately. And it's, and it, and it happens, you know, even as, as, you know, I've coached, uh, being a head coach is easier because you kind of pick and choose your, your assistant coaches. But when you, when you become a, <laughs> an assistant coach, you know, even athletic director and assistant coach here, you still got to go along with some of the things that the head football coach is doing. You know, like you do a thing and I'll tell myself, Hey man, we don't, we don't talk like that around the kids. You know, we don't do this, you know, and you have to make it, make it uh kind of clear to them without 
without hurting the feeling, without letting, without putting your religion too far out there online. Just, hey, we just don't talk like that to the kids, you know, stuff like that. So it really hadn't been a, a big problem at the, it just kind of worked there because everybody, know, hey, don't, don't say that. He, he's a pastor. Don't, don't say that. He's free, you know, and, and the kids like, oh, okay. You know, so they, they still have respect for it, yeah. you know. I would imagine you've taken the approach that Jerome Tang has at Kansas State. I, I love the interview that he did, you know, in front of the the nation or in front of all these people talking about his faith and how he doesn't necessarily talk about it specifically every day, but he lives it out every day. But you have and, to do it. Yeah, so more is caught than taught anyway, right? Yeah, that's it. That's it. I got a good friend of mine that uh, she's she's a, she's retired now, but she said. Uh, preach the word and use words sometime. <laughs> That's good. That was you tell me. Just live it, you know, just live it. <laughs> Man, you, you could take that, coach. You could take that a lot of ways. Yeah, you, 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 you Forget not even just your faith, but the culture that you want to have in your program. Yeah. You can't just talk about it. Like you actually have to be about it. You have to live it out every day because yeah. if not, if if your players see any deviation oh, from man. what you're trying, what you say you're about, man, yeah. they're they're gonna sniff that real quick. Oh yeah, you know they will. You know they will. We yeah. in our in our FCA, you know, we we've got FCA started now, and uh and uh, and I tell the kids all the time, you know, we're we're salt, you know, we're we're the light, you know, for those other kids that's that's struggling out here, you know. But you guys have God has set you guys a light as salt, and if y'all lost y'all flavor. You know, it, it's good for nothing. The Bible says to be tossed inside, you know. So that's why I tell old guys all the time. You're the salt and you're the life, you know. So what are some of your habits that you have with getting in the word? You know, are do you have a plan that you go through? I would imagine maybe with teaching on weekends or on Wednesday nights, it might be even look more like a practice plan at time. You know, you're you're getting things ready, but I've always tried I try to do four chapters a day and I try to work through the Bible throughout a year, but I always, I just will always love to hear maybe what, what guys like you, um, what you do. Man. I, and it's, and it's tough because our Sunday school lesson, it has like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, every a, a scripture that leads up to our Sunday school lesson every Sunday. And I, I try to stay in intact with that. Sometimes mm. I get straight away, but most of the time I'm, I'm usually on tack with that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then anything else, man, that I can read to go into it, I'll, I'll do it, you know? Because, you know, because once you read it, like Genesis, we know that's going to be about the beginning, you know, Exodus, you know, that's what that's going to, you know, you, you kind of got a feel of what each one of those books is about. But, you know, every time we read it, we get something new out of it. Yeah. Every time we talk about it, we get something new. So I just I try to keep that that uh Sunday school lesson intact with what we're doing. And and then man, every now and then God will give me something like, wow, you know, and, and, and I'm sure it, it happens to all of us. You know, you you read something like, where did that come from? You yeah. Know, you read it a thousand times, but it's but it's different when when it's what God wants you to read, you know. Coaches, the Jamoti Podcast is powered by Shoot360. The future of basketball has arrived in Dallas-Fort Worth. Shoot360 combines the latest sports technology with the fundamentals of basketball skill development. The result is a -a one-of-a-kind video game-like basketball program designed to improve your shooting, dribbling, and passing. Visit Shoot360DFW.com to learn more and register for your free one-hour workout evaluation. Shoot360, the future of basketball is here. This is a this is a new question, so I'm excited to. You're my guinea pig here. With but I usually talk about great leaders, and, and but I wanted to get a little bit more specific with it. If you had to pick three characteristics that great coaches possess, and they're obviously like a, the problem with when I say one thing, a lot of people like Kevin Eastman. I had the pleasure of talking with him. He he didn't get mad at me, but he was like he's like I hate one thing questions. I was like, oh, all right. I I apologize. Uh, No, but what are three characteristics you could pick about that that a great coach has? Man, love. That's the first one. You know, it's got, you got, you got to love what you're doing. Man, you got to love these kids regardless of what their background is. You know what I mean? I, 
a lot of these people out here come, they like, man, he did this. Oh, he did that. Oh, he did this. You oh, you don't want man, he did. No, no, no. I don't even care. <laughs> you're locked up and you're locked up for a reason. Like whatever mm -hmm. it is, you know, it, it doesn't matter with me. But you but you gotta love kids. You gotta love your job, you gotta love what you're doing. And then and then the number number two is I think you got to really you gotta really have a, an attitude of, of of just thanksgiving, you know, just just being thankful for for being in a situation. Man, I then I <laughs> as a song to say, I come from a poor family. I didn't have much. Well, that's that's what I, I think I get that gratitude is just always being thankful. Yeah. So yeah. if you love people and you're thankful for what they are, and then I think that that third characteristic I think of a real good coach is that uh he's got he's concerned his concern for others and I think that's probably part of the love part you know well, care yeah level of care yeah that's it that's it so with that love loving uh care uh loving thank being thankful and I think the final is like I say is just that's the concern for for others not and not just for the kids man <laughs> I go to Louisville right now, and, and it's strange. All the teachers and principals that are still there when I was there, one of the main guys that I go to is Jose. You know, he, he was a janitor that was there in 2005 when I went there. You know, and still there right now. And, like, still walk around and still doing stuff. He's like, oh, Thomas. You know, we embrace like it ain't nothing. But, but, I, but I show concern not just for the kids that were there, but, man, I, the, the cafeteria workers especially, you know, because I needed – I always need to eat, you know, so <laughs> and get a line of but just concerned about people, man. I, those those care and those are the things that I've stolen since '82, you know, from all the good coaches that I've been around, you know. That's a great reminder. And I'll full transparency, the concern part, probably that third one. I I struggle the most, I think, day to day with the tunnel vision that I feel as a coach of, you know, in second period in basketball class, those 20, 25, whatever, right now I'm all in, I am concerned. And I, I do my best to be concerned, not just about their, their shot right, and their right. handle, but about them as people, but walking in the hallways, do I remember to have that same level of concern from the staff that I am actually a part of, you right. know, at, at grapevine faith, do I, have that level of concern for all of the students, not just the ones that play basketball. And I think if I'm being honest with myself, I think I have different levels of care yeah. and I can probably really grow in that area. Uh, I, uh, I, I left uh, Miranda city and I told stuff for two years, 82 and 83. You was talking about that. Uh, one of my uh, former students, I didn't get a chance to, Work with her, but I had a brother in in uh, in in the, in, in the ninth grade and eighth grade year, and uh, she she committed suicide. And so when I found out, the family asked me would I come to the funeral. I'm like, heck yeah, I'll be glad to come. I'll be there, you know. But I I was gonna go as a supporter. But when I got there, the mom and dad saw me and they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm here. I'm happy to say, no, come up here. We want you to sit with a family. That was the like 1982 coach you know it's like this happened like two or three years ago it was like 30 38 39 years ago that <laughs> you know that these people are still like man they still like family to me you know wow like, so what you talk about and i'm talking about concern that's that's how that concern and and that attitude and that love got to be you know it's that the same way and i i, I can tell you so many stories it's crazy man i don't want to take up all your time but it's like you know, but you got to be concerned about people, man. Yeah. Can't get so caught up in what you're doing. And I, I do love, I love basketball just the same yeah. way that you do. Heck yeah. But Heck. we got to, we got to remember why we're doing this. Exactly. Like why are, why we are where we are. And yeah. it, it has to be more than just about the game. You bet. You bet. Speaking about the players that you have, the young men that, you work with every day. And I, and again, the next question will get a little bit even more into your program and into, into your school. Mm -hmm. The love part. I would imagine that's a word or a feeling that some of these young men have not felt much in their life. 
how do you feel how important is that for you to speak that into them daily it's, man you talk to them and they'll say coach where your dad He's in jail uh, where your dad he got he got killed my mom raised me you know you hear you hear over and over again you know and 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 the, and the, and to tell them man hey, I love you man it, one, it it works uh one of the kids that's been here for uh three years played basketball for me man he gave me a big hug said coach I love you I said man do good out there don't get in trouble do not come back here da, 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 da. I love you too you know wouldn't say it barely would talk when he came you mm-hmm. know but here he is embracing me, telling me that he loved me. So you you see your work being done. Uh man, kid from 2014, when I first came here, called me about 2018, 2019, Coach Tom. I was like, hey. I said, what's going on, Ben? I said, man, you remember me? I said, yeah, I don't know. I, don't know. I remember you. I said, Coach, I'm getting married uh this summer, and I need you to do my wedding. I'm like, what? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> He's a truck driver, he's doing good. Every now and then he'll drive through with his motorcycle, stop by the house, and he, there I go, following me on his motorcycle. You know, but he, but that's the kind of kids that you want to come back and say, "Hey, man, I, I was here, I did this, I, I made a mistake." But now I've got a family. He's got two kids now. You know, beautiful wife. You know, it's just that you, you, you just try to do those things to make kids better. You know, show them that love, show them that support, that let them know that there's something else other than. <laughs> The yeah. Gang banging, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think sometimes as, as coaches, we worry about the standards that we've set. How many times do we give guys second chances oh, or do we have to hold a hard line to things? But in your case, I mean, coach, I would imagine you're, you're all about second chances. Like it has to be about second chances. Can you speak to that a little bit? We, Wow. Man, we're going through like an intramural season right now. And, and so now I've picked out about 12 of those kids out of about, I don't know, if you got eight teams or about eight kids, about 50 or 60 kids. And uh, now I've got a team that we're trying to get our basketball team going. And now I've got a kid that for the last two games, when he lost, he's put, pulled his shirt off, got mad, got upset, got ready to fight. So uh, he came to me this morning and said, Coach, he said, uh, I'm not going to play. I say, hey, you want, you're one of the best players out here. But I can't take you off campus. Say, oh, say, yeah. I say, you can't go off campus because your attitude is too bad. I say, you'll get us kicked out the league. You'll get the police involved with us. We can't, we can't, I can't do that. So yeah. that's why you're not coming to practice. He said, I understand. I understand. I say, so get your attitude right. You know, do what you're supposed to do. I when you, when you leave, when you lose the game, I need to see you go up to the guy, shake his hand, pat him on the back, tell him good game. That's what I need to see you do. I don't need to see you uh, pull your jersey off at the end of the game or before the game go with, and you're mad because y'all losing. You know, I, I don't yeah. need to see that. But am I going to say, no, you're not going to play? No, he, he's going to get an opportunity. You know, I'm going to give him an opportunity. Number one, because he's a play, he's a good kid, and just as respectful as he can be away from the court. He just doesn't know how to lose yet. You know, Man, I, what a I, great I, classroom to teach him that, right? Yeah, you bet. That's it. That's it. And and it, and it just doesn't stop with basketball. It's going to keep going. You know, it's going to keep going. Yeah. I probably should have already done this before now, but we've been, I've been kind of mentioning it that we'd get to your program. And we tell a little bit about just Gainesville State, where you are and, and what that school is about. Wow. We, we're, uh, a correctional institution for kids ages 14 to 19. It used to be uh used to be 14. Now I think we've got kids like 13 here. Hmm. So, but they've done uh serious crime. You know, they've they've had three chances to to get it right in the public public schools and the free world. They messed up, so now. This is their uh, last opportunity to get things right. And their next opportunity, if they can't get it right here, it's on to Huntsville or one of the uh, another correction institution. But that's kind of what we have here. And they've done anything, you know, like I said, from, from rape to murder to stealing to armed robbery. They, they've done it all, you know. And that's kind of that's kind of kids that we've had here on the campus. And those kids that we 
that we deal with, you know, from from that age group until 18. You know, when they get when they turn 19, they either got the like I say they got to go to Huntsville or they uh they go leave here on probation or uh, they're free. You know, one or the yeah. other. And we just and we just try to correct them and do the best we can while they're here to just make sure that they're good individuals when they get out there and see. A guy by the name of Coach Salmon out there. Yeah, they can shake his hand and say, hey, you know. <laughs> and it happens. You know, it happens. Um, yeah. I know that you believe that God has you there specifically for for a, an important purpose. I believe that, too. So I, I love I love the fact that the last 10 years of your career has been at a school like that. Like, it really is incredible. And yeah, like the, the why that you have is just, it's great. It's a great why. And but I'll, if coaches don't know, I mean, you were at Denton High School, Louisville High School, Flowermon High School if for a long, long part of your career with a lot of wins. So just curious, what brought about the move to a Gainesville State? You know, I, when I was at Louisville, I, you know, sometimes I guess when you get to the point where you can tell, man, it's time, it's time to go. You know, I can tell. Uh, the the pastor at the church in Frisco, while I was associate minister, at, he he retired, and so I'm like, okay, now, man, I'm, if I'm going to do this, I need to do it, you know, the right way. I need to be, be a full time pastor. That's what I'm going to do, and so that's kind of what I did. I stepped away from it, and I I stepped away with like 486 men, and so <laughs> the AD and the principal and everybody like coach, we we building a new gym. You know, you're you're very instrumental in the fact that we're getting this gym. Uh, you need to stay, so at least open it up. I think, well, if I stay this next year, then guess what? I'm going to stay another year. Then I don't <laughs> stay. You know, I'm never going to leave, you know? It's true. <laughs> but, I, but I've done 29 years. I'm at the rule of 80. So, you know, I'm 51 years old. I, I can still do a little bit something else. I can still preach. I can still pastor the church. Let me Let me do that. And that was what 13 years ago that I decided. So, but so between those at 51 and 64, <laughs> you know, uh, that's how the Flower Mound deal came about. That that we uh they needed a coach for for Flower Mound, so they called me back and I needed 14 wins. I'm like, I might can get these 14 wins, you know. <laughs> get that 500, yeah. Hey, I might can do it, you know. And sure enough, man, and and it's crazy, man, because. Man, that, that five that five hundred win came against the number three team in the state, Plano West. Oh wow, it was crazy, man. I that, imagine that was a really was, good Plano West team. That, that, I mean, they had some they had some yeah. dudes. Yeah, they really did. They did. So, and it was like it was no way we should have won that game. You know, we were down by sixteen at halftime. You know, and but but it, but when I when I won it, God won. He told me these are the words that came from him to me. It was like, okay, you can take credit for the 499, but the 500 is mine. You know, because it's no way, man. They was Marcus won the state that year. Yeah. Playing Old West, we're number three in the state. So that's, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's how it was. And, and we didn't even get to the playoffs at Flower Mound, but, but we knocked Plain Old West off. Right? So you were at Flower Mound, and then again, Gainesville State. How do you get there? Man, before there, I, I I drove. I started driving buses. You know, kind of you know, a little income on here and there. Uh, went to work at North Texas uh, with Doctor Baker, with teaching a volleyball class, uh, track class. You know, doing different things out there. And uh, and and so what happened was the uh, the job at at Gainesville came up with a basketball job. The head coach here, Coach Williams, was retiring. And they needed a basketball coach. I'm like, uh, I think I'm just going to chill out and just uh, say, well, just, you don't have to take it. Just come out here and talk to us. Man, that's the wrong thing to do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and when I came out and talked to the superintendent, talked to the principal, you know, they were you know, all for me. And, and so that's kind of what I did. That was like in, in, I guess, June or July of 2014. And uh, that's where I've been for the last – uh, 10 years here. So it's, mm. it's my 10th year. I'd imagine uh, there's probably been some tough times, but you've been able to see some amazing transformation, like God really working in some of these young men's lives. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's really had. I mean, it's just, 
you know, just to just and and the thing about how you keep up, with, you're able to keep up with the kid. You know, uh, some of them leave. It's a sad situation because we just uh, quarterback who was uh, uh, played in the state championship game. You know, back in I guess 2018, 2019, working, doing good, got caught in a crossfire. He got killed about a month ago, you know, mm -hmm. down in Houston. Uh, some of the kids that that like I told you that that was successful, that went on, have done good. Uh, truck drivers. Uh, some of them got their own business, you know, working in bands. You know, it's just you you go you go on Facebook and you see these guys doing those things. Man, you're like man, I'm so proud of you. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Man, keep up the good work. You know, you're also you know just. Just compliment them on the thing, and then you got, like I say, you got some that say, "Hey, man, I, this that stuff ain't for me." I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna stay like I am, and they end up in Huntsville, you know, at one of the prison units, you know. So yeah, but you got to imagine you're still just like uh, the way the way I feel here. I think the way most coaches, teachers feel is that we may not see the fruits of the labor right now, but we're planting those good seeds, right? That's what we're doing, man. That's exactly what we're doing. You're exactly right. The Jamoti Podcast is powered by Sideline Interactive. Sideline Interactive is the leading manufacturer for high-quality, innovative scoring tables and LED video display boards that help coaches and schools bring more excitement to fans, create huge fundraising opportunities, and make their jobs easier. Visit sidelineinteractive.com to check out their amazing products. With, with some of the backgrounds that your players come from, what is it like building confidence into them as basketball players, but also even as young men? We, I, I, I love it, man. This today was like our first day of uh, off season basketball. You know, we, we've been playing here two weeks, you know, we've been playing intramurals and stuff like that, but to see those kids come out and, and they're like looking at each other, you know, like, okay, what, well, you know, what, what you represent, what gang are you in? What, you know, why, you know, but to just see them all come together, you know, like 12, 13 kids out there, the different backgrounds, different reasons for being here. You can see it all come together. You know it's going to come together because I've seen it for like the last 10 years, even though we didn't win a lot of games. But the fact is, at the at, by the time January, February, they're like, oh, we got it. We got it. You know, it hits them that we know how to do this stuff now. But so it's too late because everybody else has been playing all summer long, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, but, but, uh, but it's, but it's a, it's a, it's a good feeling, man, to, to just see how it all just, you know, and it's not me, but it's God that just kind of brings it all together, you know, and, and it's, and it's them too, because they like, they start believing in themselves and they get that confidence as well. How hard is it to, so you talk about systems and things like that. How hard is it to build a system or to have carryover from year to year? Do you typically have the same players or are you almost looking at a brand new bunch every year? Every year, every yeah. year. We only, we only had five last year. And and sometimes when you get those kids that has been there for a while, that's doing good. You want them to be a part of it, even though they can't go off campus to be a part of it. So they can just kind of, okay, this is what they did last year is, you know, so you got a little feel of what it, but everybody else is like new. I think, Right now, we, we, we've gone on from, like, football was in January to, like, four kids. And those, those same four kids that are out there for basketball now, you know, like, hey, man, this – yeah, because I can't play basketball, I know, but you can go off campus, you know. So that's kind of <laughs> – That's a, that's a huge that. piece right there, a huge piece. That's it. That's it. I can't shoot. <laughs> Not important. <laughs> we can take you off campus. <laughs> Get in the corner, and when you get it, that shoot it. We can just play defense on the other end, you know. You know, being in taps in a private school league, you know, you're going to some schools like mine where it's expensive to go here. Like people, if you're if you're here, there are some people that go to faith that parents, sometimes the kids themselves, they're working their tails off to be able to afford this place. Others, it's not even a it's a drop in the bucket, right? Oh, yeah. You're playing against these schools, going to their schools. What's the reception been like? What are those experiences like for your players? Man, the kids at those schools at Grapevine Faith, the uh, man, the Corndales, man, the McKinney, McKinney Christians, they they love our kids, man. They they, they accept them, you know, and they it's just like they are. Uh, the parents, you know, uh, buying pieces for the kids, giving them food when they come over there. It's just like it's like you're going off campus, but 
they are welcome you. You know, like yeah. hey, regardless of what you guys have done, y'all welcome. And they accepted. You know, like you know, like I said, man, I hadn't won a whole lot of basketball. I think I've been to the playoffs like two times <laughs> since I've been here. You know, but. But just having the opportunity to work with the kids. And that's what I tell. I tell all the coaches that come in, man, we, you're not going to get fired for losing games at Gainesville. That's not going to happen. You know, you we want to push the kid. We want to do the best yeah. we can, coach them hard. But we're not going to lose our job because we lost the game, you know, because that's not what it's about. You know, the fact that Taft's letting us play in, our, in the league, in the football, in the basketball, in the track, you know, let, let us do that. That's an honor in itself. You yeah, know? talk about That's gratitude true. right there. Yeah. You bet. You bet. Yeah. I, I love it, Coach, because sometimes, sometimes, every once in a while in sports, winning isn't what's most important. And sometimes you can – you have to change your definition of success. You know, my, my senior year at Baylor, we did we, – we had to do that. Six Wait. players – you know, going against Kansas, we won yes, eight games. Coach, we were super successful. I'm sure that you've had some seasons like that where, like you've mentioned, you haven't won a lot. You haven't been in the playoffs a bunch, which is worldly success or how a lot of people measure it. But, man, right. I guarantee you, you've been successful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And we have, you know, and that's and that's that's what we look at, too. Yeah. And like I said, I'm like – Man, I'm thinking I'm about to catch up with my 500 loss, 500 wins on the 500 losses side out here. You know, so I got to retire because I'm like, it's getting get, closer. I can't be 500 when I get out of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Man, when you, when you go two uh, and fourteen, two and fourteen, and two uh, and 14, you know, man, it's going. You you I'm know this it. though, when it's all said and done, and when you stand before him. Not going to talk about those losses, man, <laughs> or the wins, but the lives, the lives that you affected. That's what that's what it's going to be about, Coach. That's what it's going to be about. Coach, before I let you go, because uh, this time went real fast, right? Doesn't It goes fast. <laughs> but I've been watching that clock. I want to make sure I don't get you in trouble. So, uh, so many coaches know you, but after the speed round, we're going to know you even better. You ready? Uh-huh. All right. Favorite ice cream flavor? Chocolate. Greatest shooter of all time. Jerry West. Nice. That's a good one. <laughs> What's your favorite one liner to tell players? This is a new question. One of my buddies said I need to ask this. Your favorite one liner. You can Ooh, you can cool. always pass. You can always pass. I, I got I got a few one liners, man. <laughs> <laughs> Play hard, play smart, play together. Is that a one liner or three liner? No, that's good. That's a one liner. Yeah, yeah, a, a phrase kind of like that. I love that. Um, you know, I think that question is every every player will have the phrase or two that you repeat a lot that they throw back at you every once. Coach, you used to say this all the time. Yeah, like I think that. Um, all right, best best gym you've ever played in? Wow, or coached in? I guess it have to be down at that where they play the regions in Fort Worth. I like that one. Okay. I can be down there twice. So nice. Not a lot of success, but we played them. <laughs> <laughs> best best basketball movie of all time. Yeah. <laughs> best basketball movie. Yeah. Uh, Hoosiers. Nice. Nice. Uh, Texting or talking? Talking. For high school, shot clock or no shot clock? Shot clock for sure. What book would you give someone? Ooh. Besides the Bible. Okay, that's what I've just been to say. <laughs> Man, I, I've got one, a motivational book that I, I keep with me. I've been had since 1982 that I have to share with everyone, all the coaches that I ever I give to. I have given my motivational book. I can't think of the name of who wrote it or anything like that, but it's got I got it in my deal. Okay. I the name of it. <laughs> okay. Um, favorite holiday? Christmas. All right, two more. In basketball, who is the GOAT? Jordan. Nice. Good answer. <laughs> A place that you haven't traveled, but that you want to? New York. 
New York. All right. Yeah. Last one. Last one. This is a real last one. Okay. If you do take in caffeine of any kind, how do you how do you how do you do it? How do you take it? Like drink. What 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 do you drink? It has to be this bright. Okay. Because yeah. I used to ask coffee. I used to say, like, what do you do you drink coffee or no? Um, or, or what, how do you drink your coffee? Something like that. And I realized a lot of people don't drink coffee. And so I, I just wanted to tell you like, but then they, and so I'd say no caffeine and they'd say, yeah. oh, well, I drink Sprite. I drink, you know, something yeah. I was like, okay. So <laughs> trying to adjust that one a little bit. I but, got you. Uh, <laughs> Coach, this Matt, was, this was awesome, man. It's so enjoyable. Man, I, appreciate, I appreciate you. I do, man. I, like I said, I, I was excited about this. I got a whole lot of questions answered down here in this paper right here, but I know I didn't even look at them or anything. I'm like, <laughs> well, <laughs> you made it easy. Oh man, it's my pleasure. <laughs> Always fun to 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 get to talk to you. I wish we could do it more. And I just want to thank you again for one everything you've done for the coaching profession, but more importantly for for players over your years, and especially uh, where you are there, because uh, it's a special thing that you're doing. And you're affecting so many people, man. Really appreciate you. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.